what does the London Marathon mean to me? As a Londoner, I guess the question that should come before this is, what does being a Londoner represent to me? As a black British kid growing up in London, I couldn't relate to both British and African running culture. Sport was never a priority in my household, which was a very immigrant mentality. Hustle, work hard, do your best. And I wasn't exposed to that kind of running club culture, including cross country as a youth. And I couldn't really relate to the runners from the elites or from the masses based on the people that I saw and knew in the area that I lived and existed within. But what the marathon represented to me was the celebration of the city that I live in. Often it's so easy to live in a place but not know it. The marathon seemed to provide a way to open up and show this space off that was often closed. And watching the marathon on the television brought out the best of Londoners and the best of London. And after seeing that, I was drawn to apply and run the marathon to explore the unseen parts of my city that I called home. You know, sport is such a powerful way of uniting a group of people that in other days just pass each other like ships in the night. So I've been on a massive journey with this race and it means so much to me. In my podcast, I often ask the guest, what does a runner's life mean to you? But I guess the question I'm looking to answer in this film is, what does the London Marathon represent to the runners of the 2021 Virgin Money London Marathon? Well, I don't. I personally do not feel you can call yourself a Londoner if you haven't run the London Marathon. I'm going to be controversial and say that because I think it's a race that every Londoner should do, should be invited to, should be allowed to do because I think you definitely get a real sense of the beauty of how wonderful London can be when it comes together by experiencing running that race. One of my most favourite moments of the London Marathon is the beginning part when you leave your house and you start walking towards the station to travel to the start line and you suddenly start realising there are other people in your neighbourhood who also run. The start line in Greenwich the amount of people who you see when you first arrive is amazing. 40,000 people all gathered in one space getting ready to run this race. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. Can you say who you are, where you're from, and what your whys are to run the London Marathon? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is James Gray King, uh, originally from England, as my accent may attest, but I've been in New York now for nearly 13 years. You know, the why for the London Marathon is, in some senses, I was never a runner in England. I was quite happy if I could get out of PE lessons. And so I picked up running seven or eight years ago here in New York, and it, it dawned on me at that point that I'd probably never run a mile in my life in England. Hi, I'm Michael Dolan. I am from Langley Mill. One of the reasons why I was run uh, the London Marathon in 2021 is going to be for guide dogs. Um, hi. My name is Trina Dawkins and I live in East London. So um, this will be my first London marathon. Uh, Philip King, I'm, I'm based in Little Rock, Arkansas in the United States. And one of the reasons I wanted to run the London Marathon is I wanted to complete all six world majors. So uh, I'm Sally, I'm based in Walthamstow in East London. And one of my whys for running the London Marathon is for uh, sanity and for structure in my life uh, that marathon training gives me. Can you tell me what a runner's life looks like to you? Yeah, um, a runner's life, that's so interesting. Um, I don't know whether I even think of myself as a runner, honestly, I don't know, because I think any, everybody is a runner and can be a runner. But for me in my life, it just means making time for myself. Um, it means getting away from, like I live on quite like a busy shopping street and obviously it's very congested, very London-y, like about a mile away. But for me then, it means having a good reason to come out here and to just sort of have space for my thoughts and like breathe in some wildly fresher air and be amongst greenery and nature. It means like, I just build it around what I do anyway as well. Um, I do a lot of like run commuting or running to, I'm like that person that shows up at events like really sweaty in my running kit because I'm like, well, I mean, it was only like five miles, so I thought I might as well run it. So um, it just fits in with my life. Um, but yeah, it also makes me feel, it makes me feel great, yeah. A runner who says he can do it on his own is a fantasist because 
all the good runners I know have got a good partner or a good support network behind them. Man, honestly, like, I look at my life and I can't really, like, see my life as a runner's life because I have, you know, so much other responsibility before running. So, hi, I'm David. I live in Plymouth in the southwest. And why I'm doing the London Marathon is mainly because it's a big high-profile event and I just want to have fun. More generally, running is sort of my main form of exercise but it's also a bit of escapism and it's the time when I can get away from my work and my um, general life. Hi my name is Nathalie Lacroix I'm based in London I'm from Bethnal Green. I am a female 55 plus and I'd like to inspire other females that of the same age that we can all complete a marathon we can all do a marathon it's not something that's outside our realms one of my personal favorites would be along the Cotisac because that is quite iconic for me it's the the historic nature of the boat and just looking at it because I mean for many years it had been closed off so you couldn't see when they were doing the refurb and the spirit of London is huge I can't explain it I mean it's it, it's just um, I was I was blown away you still get a really good feeling of the rush and it was the first time ever that I understood the feeling of reclaiming the streets of London with our feet oh look the sun's gone in nicely okay hi uh, I'm Tanya Franks and uh, one of the reasons that I run the London Marathon is because the spirit of the event is huge. It's, it's such a, an amazing adrenaline rush that when I ran the first one, it was one of the very best days of my life. And I guess I just need to feel that again. It starts where I went to school. So I was at school in Greenwich. And of course, it starts right there at Blackheath which is, you know, down the road from the Cutty Sark and that whole area. And it runs the first six miles. You are running through all the areas where I grew up. And I grew up around Plumstead and South East London, Woolwich. So it's, I was literally in tears the whole way around because I was, I was in nostalgia heaven. And, uh, and I think I was really probably boring my fellow runners by saying that's where I went used to go to the cinema that's where I used to go to the shop that's where my best friend used to live that's where blah, blah. and uh, so yeah it was I, I was in tears probably for most of the London Marathon. Fun enjoyment is definitely a priority for a lot of people right now this pandemic has been so tough for so many people can you talk about how you've navigated the situation up to now? Um, for me I've been quite fortunate I've not been too badly affected. I've just transitioned straight to working at home rather than working in an office. Can you tell me how does running complement other areas of your life and vice versa? So I, I guess for me that there's a couple of crossovers. Um, so I'm, as you might know, quite passionate about the environment and sustainability in general. And in fact, I do that in my job as well. And I work on low carbon technology and net zero strategy. So when I'm out on the trails and running, I feel a real connection to nature and that connectedness, it, it really crosses over between what I do in my personal life and, and the running. And I find that it almost helps me to keep that tangible connection when in your job, it you know, I might be working on something that reduces carbon emissions by X amount, but until you actually go out and see the plants and the trees and so on, you can lose that actual connection. So I'd say that's that's probably the, the main crossover for me. And I feel like runners generally have a slightly better grasp on it and on environmental impact. However, there are cases where it could be a lot better I'm a big fan of um, trees, not teas. I feel like running uh, complements life in the sense that um, you can do hard things. Like 
uh, nothing is impossible. You, you, the only person that can limit you is yourself. So sometimes I think about, like some of the guys say, when I get off work and I come home and I'm tired and it's hot, and the last thing I want to do is go out and run for an hour and five minutes, but I get out there and I do it. And then I come back and I get up and do it all over again. So it lets you know that you can do whatever you put your mind to. It's kind of like if you if you if you want to make an excuse on why not to do a run, you can do that. But if you set your mind to something, you can do it. And so it it, it never like so you gonna deal with all type of obstacles in life and stuff. And it's just how you plan to deal with it. If you keep pressing, you know. You hit mile three and you're like, wow, I feel a little better. You get to mile four to six and you really feeling good. And now you're coming up towards the end of the run and you don't even feel like stopping running. I think in some ways, yeah, part of what makes marathon training, I think, so valuable to me is the degree to which it provides you with some organization. You know, there's, there's structure in there. I'm a big fan of Sunday night. I look at what the plan is for the coming week. I map it out in the calendar start to work out, okay, cool, if I have to do eight miles on this day, what does work look like on that day? And it just, it centers the whole week because you have this thing you kind of have to plan around. Um, so I think, number one, just organizationally, the two things complement each other quite well. They just, if you get good at organizing your running, you tend to find that spilling into other areas of your life where you just become a bit more disciplined and a bit more diligent. Um, so I think I think that helps a lot, but... I think the other piece that is kind of unheralded is the time you actually get to think about just whatever you need to think about in the day. That time by yourself where you're going for a run, I realized there's normally when I solve something, I have to solve for work. You know, that that moment when, you know, I'm working remotely at the moment, so, you know, you're at home and my girlfriend's working remotely too, so you're just seeing the same walls and all of a sudden you get out and that thing that felt like a really difficult problem for the last few hours, you suddenly fix in 10 minutes just while running and looking at something different. Um, so to me, that that's probably the real thing is, is, is that solace moment where you go and you just are alone with your thoughts for a while and suddenly you can put things back together. What's one of the best lessons that you've learned and it could be running or life? If there's one that sort of sticks in your mind. My lesson in life on it, on things is, if you can help somebody, help them and hope that one day that somebody will return the favour and possibly help you. Help is one of the biggest things that one person can actually give. It's far better than, you know, money, presents or things like that. One person giving up, giving up their run to help somebody who's had a bit of a mental breakdown and been suicidal. The young lady reproached the run director of the run and the medic and said, like, I don't know, you know, I'm unsure of running, I've not run for a while, I feel really out of place, out of, you know, out of my, out of my depth. And race director said, well, there's nothing I can do to help you. And the run medic turned around and said, yep, I can help you. So I'm coming out of the toilet and the wife waves to me, come on over here, waves me over. I goes over, she goes, hi, this is Hannah. Hannah, this is my husband. He's going to take you all the way around the course. And we then proceeded to... Uh, run, laugh, uh, a few tears here and there from her um, around the marathon course, well, the half marathon course, and right at the end, um, she thanked me. Um, we actually got an award for coming joint last. Um, we got a bottle of whiskey for that between us each. And it was just donating your run or sacrificing your run to help another person. Kind of the best lesson I've learned and, and kind of line up with both running and life is 
uh, be patient. It's just, just be patient. Tough times ain't going to last forever. You know, good times ain't going to really last forever. It's just got to be kind of level if, in order to uh, keep moving forward. The best, le- the one I've kind of lived my life by um, has really been for, for some of my mum's job when I was young meant that we spent a bunch of time in nursing homes and things. So she was a minister, which means you'd be there quite a lot. And you would hear people tell stories, um, really huge, elaborate stories when you were there uh, about things it turned out that they'd never done. So it's like, oh, I had the opportunity to go do, 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 do. And it sounded incredible. And then it would always end with some version of, I wish I'd done it. Um, and I think, you know, even at a pretty young age, in hearing those stories, I realized I never wanted to be a person that said, I wish I had done that. It's like, I would rather try something, fail spectacularly, uh, but know you'd put yourself out there and you'd, you'd done it, versus looking back and saying, wow, I had an opportunity and I could have done it and I never took it. One of the best lessons that I've learned through running and I suppose making it applicable to my life as well is having the knowledge that I can achieve something that I thought I would never ever achieve. And realizing that actually everybody has a capacity to do something. Everybody has a capacity to achieve something that we have no idea that we can do. And it gave me the opportunity to challenge that in myself and to believe in myself in a new way. And that it wasn't just about an ambition or or a work path or, you know, a big future dream that you have. For me, it was, it's something that is very personal. Uh, It's not dependent on anybody else. And you can be free within it because I can take myself off and be alone with myself and enjoy my thoughts and the environment around me wherever I am just by having a pair of trainers with me and being able to embrace sometimes the solitude of a morning or sometimes like it's beautifully sunny today and just seeing the greenery in a different way and if you're running with other people, just enjoying that energy together. Hi, my name's Scott Mitchell. I'm from London and I'm running this year's London Marathon as I'm an ambassador for Alzheimer's Research UK. Can you talk a little bit about why Alzheimer's is a a cause that you're running and raising money for? Yeah, certainly. My wife, um, who unfortunately has now passed away, and was uh, very known to many people, Dame Barbara Windsor. Uh, Unfortunately, she had Alzheimer's and she was diagnosed in 2014. Some friends of hers uh, from the EastEnders cast were asked if they'd be prepared to run the marathon, get a little team together, and somehow they convinced me to do it. Now, I was never a runner. Um, You know, I've never, I've always, I may have, gone to gyms etc but I've never been a runner as such and I've always avoided anything to do with cardio that that has been my main thing you know if I can get out of really exerting myself I would so they somehow managed to convince me that I am capable of running a marathon and I was 55 and I, I didn't believe that I could do that but as I started doing it you know of course it was a it was a subject that was very close to my heart it was something I started to feel very passionate about and I realized that the awareness that was being raised through through Barbara's illness was an incredible thing and it kind of made me even more passionate so basically what the marathon was your first introduction to running yeah it was I guess you I guess you could say that I did couch to marathon in six months yeah i was contacted um through a mutual friend by a guy called jeremy joseph who is a keen marathon runner and a friend of uh, london marathon and he said look i've seen that you're going to be doing this you you've never run before he said why don't i take you out you know and 
a couple of runs just to maybe I can give you some tips. So I said, yeah, lovely. So the first run he took me, I guess I must have reached about a quarter of a mile and I stopped and I, I was huffing and puffing. I felt sick. But instantly I, I said to myself inside my head, why on earth have you said publicly that you're going to do this? Because it's crazy, you're not capable of this. But anyway, he was really good and we, we walked back and we, we chatted about it and he said, I'll tell you what, I'll come up next week and do that. He said, why don't you just go out in between that, just do a couple of run walks yourself. And that's how it started. And you know, within a few weeks, the distances were getting a little bit longer. I wasn't as out of breath as I was when I started. And I was starting to feel really good at the end of these runs and, and started to feel really positive. And um, because I was experiencing some very difficult situations at home with my wife's illness, it actually became this incredible release, this, in, this incredible place where I could be me for, for just a short space of time and have this headspace to think, to talk. And of course, the more runs I was doing, my fitness was getting better. And there was another bonus as well. I mean, it was most, you know, I was suddenly thinking, oh, I don't think I've been this fit for a long time. So there was so much kind of in, in, positivity going for it. And as the distances got longer, as we started clocking up, you know, into the miles, and, you know, then at double figures, you know, the first time I'd, I'd run double figures, I was ecstatic. I couldn't believe uh, you know, the, the sense of achievement that I'd actually managed that. Because I was one of those people, and I know there's, there's so many people like it, because I still have friends that when I say I ran a marathon, they go, oh, I could never do that. And I always say to them, no, I was that person who could never do that. And then I started, and then I started training, and then I learned different things about running and training. And, and I think one of the things I've learned is you can only do your own pace. You know, I can't do the pace of an elite runner. I can't do the pace of someone who's 30 years younger than me. The, the odds are they are going to be fitter and better at it than I am. But that is not a reason for me not to do it because there's so many benefits for me to take part in, in that challenge. And uh, I, I'd say it's most likely transformed my life. I, I was 56 the day I ran the marathon. And I, I think my only wish is, is that I would have discovered it when I was much younger. There's crowds of people, the noise, I remember the noise as you kind of approach Tower Bridge and you can, you can see the crowds and you can hear the noise in front. The pace picks up, but again, it's a case of trying to bring it in as you, you kind of get taken in by the atmosphere as it, it pulls you along. What does the upcoming London Marathon mean to you as we approach it? More than I thought, I guess, is probably the quick way of saying it. Um, so I was supposed to do it last year, as were so many people. And obviously that was one of the first things that started to drop off our calendar. Um, you know, and I, I remember well being in, in work because I was working in retail and we started to get this sense that the stores were going to close down um, and, you know, it was just after the NBA had kind of canceled their season. And so all of the sports were kind of falling apart. I'm like, ah, London's going to be next. Like you could just see it coming. So then that announcement goes out and, you know, the day that London was supposed to be, I kind of mapped out something here in Williamsburg where I could run just the words London. So I'm like, cool, that was my London for today. Cause you know, that kind of meant something. And then I did the virtual one, but obviously here in New York, so just loops the central part. But even hearing the music at the beginning on the app, you're like, I miss this. Um, but for me, I guess it's, it's the secondary piece too, where I, I've not seen family in England for you know over two years now, not seen friends in England for over two years. So London Marathon kind of feels like this odd running and life homecoming all in one hit. I think being in London, actually running the home city and being a person of colour, for me, for once, although I've brought, I've been brought up in London, tourists probably know more about London than I do. Um, so one, it'll give me an opportunity to probably be able to visit 
and see and actually be able to name a lot of the local attractions. And also the other thing about running is I'm always I'm always trying to encourage young people, especially people of colour, to take up running, kind of use it as an avenue to achieving different things in life because you don't just use running for one thing. For me, running has kind of been like used as a stepping stone. Yeah, um, I, I think it really showed me personally that I had so much more strength within me than I believed. So, so much more endurance. Um, Cause I always gave up with things. You know, I, was, I always, I, I would take the shortcut if possible. But I was at a time in my life, um, let's say both what was happening, caring for my wife and also suddenly challenging myself physically like this. I was at a time in my life where I really had to stand up and be counted. And I cannot tell you that has carried forward with me through, through everything that has happened since. My running is such a big part of, of who I am and how I feel about myself today. So the last 18 months have been like, I think I did the same thing as everybody else did at the start of the pandemic and was like, this is an opportunity, like Joe Wick style, like the nation's getting fit. Like I'm gonna be like the fastest and the fittest that I've ever been. Um, and that lasted probably like until the virtual one. And then obviously we went into like another set of lockdowns over winter. And I will be honest and just be like, I just kind of like lost momentum at that point. Like I'd say like the, the December, January lockdowns like really took away my motivation completely like and that's yeah that's just me I, I, I and I'd never lost my running mojo before and I like did big time that lockdown and I think it was just because like I don't know whether you, like did you feel I felt like it was just never going to end at that point like I was just like what's the end point of this like when a race is coming back like will there even be a marathon this year and I just was like can't be bothered anymore so I kind of I was still running it was still ticking over but I just didn't have that drive at all um, we've, lost, oh, we've I... lost the dead cat oh no because I I think I'd like forgotten how exciting it is to, to race and so I wasn't feeling motivated I did a few like when park run came back which was only quite recently wasn't it like it was only like a month ago or so and um, someone dragged me along to a park run and I just that you know that feeling of like being on the start line and like it racing against all of it and everybody's there doing the same thing and I was like oh I remember this is really good like this is gonna be sick so um so yeah that, I think that probably contributed like races coming back in general definitely reminded me of why I love like the marathon and why I love like events hi my name's Aya I'm from South East London and um, while I'm running the London Marathon is pursue to be the best version of myself can you talk a little bit about what being the best version of yourself looked like? Yeah, so around 2013, 2014, I was hardly doing, doing any exercise. I was overweight. I was advised by uh, the doctor I needed to lose weight because of minor health issues I had. Didn't think about a marathon or even running in general be a thing I'll do. So eventually I started to run. First time I remember running, um, I thought I was having a heart attack. I had to get a bus back home. But from there, I just built and built, got stronger and stronger. And here we are now. Well, Canary Wharf, I, I used to live down in the Isle of Dogs many years ago, um, before it became what it is now. So I am fully aware of what it looked like before. It was absolutely desolate. So to see it now and to actually Personally, to have to, you know, running through there, like on training runs, I, I go there very often. And I, I look at it and I just think it, it's just absolutely changed, completely changed. It's become more commercial. The buildings are beautiful. It's, you know, the roads are absolutely, you wouldn't think that just had not been there for many years. You know, one of the things that has been at the centre of a lot of my work over the last 15 years is this idea of creating a collective of people that can inspire other people to move. You know, with Mile 21, you know, when we talk about the art direction, it's kind of one of the things we really think about is how does, how is this section of street going to photograph 
I think you can get a lot of inspiration from seeing photos from the marathon, seeing people who look like yourself and think, you know what, I could do that. If they can do it, then I can definitely do it. And so when I see the impact that Mile 21 has had globally on marathons around the world, you know, it has made people realise that just because you're not running doesn't mean that you can't be involved. And I think that's really important. You know, we've been thinking about whether we were going to do Mile 21 this year. And it just doesn't necessarily feel right to kind of be organising a gathering of people. And so actually, we've decided to sit this year out, and hopefully come back next year and do it properly. Because the thing about Mile 21 takes four months to organise with the artwork and the printing and the decoration and the design and going out the night before and putting the posters up. And it's kind of difficult to do when you don't have your team assembled. And so obviously because Run Them Crew is not in kind of 110% operation at the moment, it's kind of, you don't simply don't have the manpower to basically go out there and produce it on the level that we'd like to because each year it has to be better than the year before. Sometimes you can use running as a like I've definitely used running as a tool for being like, this will solve everything. Like if I just do this, then, you know, like you, I think everybody's like run as um, to try and help their mental health after bereavements and things like that. But I've also fallen into the trap of being like, well, if I just like do this marathon and if I just train really hard for this thing, then I'll feel better and everything will be okay. But actually it does, running of course helps with your mental health, but you've also got to work on yourself outside of that like that's not and then if you get in because then if you get injured right and you've put all your eggs in this like this is the marathon that's going to solve everything and I'm going to feel great after this and then you don't or you get injured and you can't participate then you're stuck then aren't you so like I don't know R running is great for your mental health but also I've definitely fallen victim to being like this will solve this will make me recover from grief for example and then you're like it will help but it, that's not the only like you to also do other stuff so, i love that yeah I, I can relate to that as well but without getting too personal it's up to you how much you decide to chair but like when was the turning point that you kind of realized that that was the case and you had to be a bit more flexible that it wasn't the be all and end all yeah well it was it was it was the berlin marathon actually because i like i signed up for that um i signed up for the berlin marathon after i lost my sister and it was my first marathon and i was like I was, you know, like when you lose someone that you're really close to and you're just like mentally all over the place. And I sort of signed up for it. I like fundraised for a charity that was really like important to her. And that was, um, and I was, I was using it as a distraction, basically. Like I was using marathon training as a distraction as well as like a tribute for sure. But like I was, yeah, definitely using it to try and distract myself from the fact that like I wasn't in a good place as you wouldn't be. Um, but then I got injured and so knew I couldn't, train or possibly even do the Berlin Marathon properly and the like how upset I was about that was totally disproportionate <laughs> you know like my reaction was just like completely outside like I was devastated that I was injured and might not be able to do the marathon and it was because I put too much emphasis on that being the thing that was going to solve everything and which is not realistic at all you know so I don't know I think Probably lots of people do that, but the risk is then that you get injured and you're like so disappointed and so devastated. But then, you know, it makes you actually take a step back and be like, what do I actually need to work on here? Like, what's the real like issue and what's the actual thing that I, that's going to help me here? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that was... <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That's quite a personal thing as well. And yeah. I, I well, it's, I mean, running has helped me a lot since then. Like. And I used to run with my sister as well, so it's a way of feeling close to her as well. So, so yeah. That's, yeah. I feel like she'll be with you come October 3rd, kind of running <laughs> with you, pushing you along when you sort of feel like, yeah. you're like when you say, oh, I'm going to die at six miles, she'll be there to like push you forward. Yeah, no, she definitely does motivate me. Although she was like, she was far too sensible to run a marathon. I would say she was a runner, but she'd be like, don't take it too far. <laughs> Why, why have you got to do 10k is fine 5k is fine why have you got to go and do a marathon do that <laughs> so. 
if you could sum up the marathon and what it represents in one word, what would it be? <laughs> it's the, the word, it was funny, I was going, I knew this was going to come up and I'm like, I, I have not got one good word. And then the one I wrote was tremendous. <laughs> that was it. That was the one that just came out. So I'm like, it's tremendous. I guess it's tremendous, I guess, in terms of being back to racing. I guess once yeah. you had it taken away, it's just the feeling of going back to it. It feels like a sort of cliched word, but at the same time, like it's a tremendous event. It makes me feel brilliant. It's all of these things. It, it provides, I think, a lot of hope to people. It provides a lot of joy. There's so many things in there that you can see when you watch the other runners, when you watch people cheering it along. Just the TV broadcast that I grew up with, like all of that together, like it's just tremendous. Discovering, discovering what you can put your body through, put your mind through, discovering what you can do when you put your mind to it, discovering your flaws while you're running around there thinking, hmm, was this a good idea or was it not a good idea? And then when you get to the end, discovery was a good idea kindness it's kindness kindness runs through the whole map of the London Marathon the fact that it's the, the main marathon in the world where it's focused on charity people do it to raise money for so many different charities that comes from kindness that they want to be able to put that amount of effort into raising that money the kindness comes from the the London Marathon events team that make the event happen because they have a huge, a phenomenal task on their hands. But it really does, the team of people that put this together, it really comes from a passion for what it is they are encouraging other people to do. And kindness from the people that are supporting on the streets and cheering and clapping. And they don't have to come out but they do. A marathon in one word, I mean, probably 95% of people are gonna say life. And, and I agree with that. I mean, marathon is life and life is a marathon. Like, it's very parallel, but I would say a little different, I'd say the, the world. I mean, cause you, at least through my travels, you. Anywhere I've went in this world, people, people, I've been able to relate to people through running. And the world, in the world, you're gonna have ups and downs. You're gonna have tough, some things are gonna be tough, some things are gonna be, you know, easy. Some things are gonna be a little sad. Some things you're gonna have enjoyment. And that just remind me of the marathon so much. Like, start off feeling fine. And you have that, that mile 13 come, that's kind of like graduating high school. The race really just beginning at that point. And then, you know, you got mile 20. That's when something might go wrong and you gotta figure out how to dig in and, and get through that rough spot. And then after that, you know, you get the finish line. That's kind of like the enjoyment, the enjoyment you have when you hit milestones in life. Like when you have, you know, kids are born, um, you know, graduation from college, a job promotion. It's inspirational. Inspirational for you doing it or watching other people doing it? Mostly watching other people doing it. So when, so when you, you when you do it and you cross the finish line, how are you going to feel? Depends how it goes. So um, one, it'll be like a conclusion to everything that's gone on in the last 18 months. It's also just to see everyone else just um, overcome everything potentially they've gone through as well. I'm going to say atmosphere because that's the one thing I'm really looking forward to with London. The word I thought of um, in terms of summing up the marathon would be belief. So for me, it's like the first step in achieving anything is believing that you actually can do it. So, and it really doesn't matter what other people say, because if you don't believe it, then it probably is unlikely to happen. So I would say the word is belief. If you could sum up what the marathon means to you in one word, what would that be? If I could sum up the marathon in one word, 
For me, it's about endurance. You have to have that endurance from start to finish. There's many ways you could describe the London Marathon. You know, there's so many single words you could use. Positivity, um, fun. There's so many different ways. But for me, the overriding one is endurance. I think if I could sum up the marathon in one word, I would use the word community. Um, because when I first started running, I was like a bit embarrassed of myself and I didn't think of myself as a runner and it was something that I did alone. Um, and I thought it was always going to be a solo thing for me. Um, and I realized um, that when I started bringing people in and when I joined a running club and like when I started running with different people and I realized that actually you can be like so much like stronger and faster and happier as a runner when what well, some people will always be solo runners but for me it's become something that's like that is my community um and they say it takes a village to do anything or build anything and for me I think any of my like marathons have been they've been a combination of like my parents there with their banners and like them buying me like chocolate milk to have as a treat after my long runs on a Saturday and it's been like members of my running club like coming out to pace me for the virtual marathon and like it's been like my coach texting me and being like you know do this or do that or it's just not it's by no means like me on my own so uh, yeah thinking about it I think community and then also the community of London like all those people on the streets cheering for people they don't know like when are you when's that gonna happen um so Another moment, actually, I'll go back to, which is probably a personal moment for me, was uh, going into Birdcage Walk. And I remember seeing my dad there, and it, I literally had to run over to him. And I literally was standing about a metre away before he'd seen me. Just the look on his face just was the best feeling in the world. Crossing the finish line is most definitely the start of something new. What did I learn about myself from that experience, from that adventure? Who am I going to share that with? What impact do I want to have? to have on them and when can we do all over again you know i like the running the marathons where you cross the finish line and you're like that was so fun i want to do that again if you're running it just for the time then you're you're not getting the full experience of what a marathon can mean to you we are incredibly blessed and gifted to be able to run any of these distances and so actually if we allow the time to dictate our personal experience and, and, and our learnings from the adventure, then I think maybe we've got it the wrong way around. And that's one of the, another one of the reasons why we created Mile 21, because in our eyes, you know, everyone deserves just as much praise, adulation, you know, and cheers as the elite runners. Just because I'm not in a club vest doesn't mean I don't deserve someone cheering their absolute heart out for me. One of the, the incredible things was uh, I, I phoned my wife, Barbara, straight after the run. And of course, you have to remember she was suffering, living with Alzheimer's at that time. So, you know, you, their grasp of everything is, is not always what it should be. Um, and I phoned her and I said, I've done it. I said, Barbara, I've done it. I've, I've run a marathon. And she went, yeah, that's very good. What time will you be home? <laughs> And I, I went, well, there's a little kind of celebration. And she went, well, you've been out all day. <laughs> so we were quite, that really brought me down to work. <laughs> Never mind the 26.2 miles. But God bless her, that will always, always stay in my mind about the end of my, run, my, end of my marathon run. <laughs> I think a lot of people can relate to that as well. Like, yeah, you get home or whatever, you're just like, you're back. You're like, I did this rather like I don't care. You've done it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing we have to remember about this challenge about running a marathon is the fact that we've chosen to do this but we tend to want to tell everyone about it and not everyone is that interested but you know i i cannot say to anyone enough this would be the best thing ever you did you ever did would be to start running if you are capable and you're not going to cause yourself any really bad health risks or anything start running and you will understand why you know why i i have this enthusiasm and smile on my face some people are struggling with their training and their motivation you know it's been a tough few years recently so what would you advise to those runners that are looking to run london this year or 
any other majors, but are struggling with their motivation to, to kind of get out there. I think the words would be stay with it. Don't miss it. It's going to be unbelievable. It will be something, I believe, that people will remember for the rest of their lives in a positive way. So it would be stay with it, slow down when you get to the day, take the pressure away from yourself and just absorb the atmosphere, absorb the feeling and the connection that you will have with your fellow human beings, the spectators, the memories, and the reason that you're really doing it. I think it will be something each runner will never forget. Do you make excuses before you go for races? And you're like, I do that all the time. Like I'll be like, oh, it's fine. I'm not going for a PB today. I'll just enjoy it. And then as soon as I cross that start line, I'm like, go, 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 go. And I like, forget that I've got niggles and I forget that, you know, and I just, yeah. It's all, it's like a, I don't know why we, we're doing it to protect ourselves, I guess, aren't we? Like I say, some of these runs do not, is not fun. <laughs> like, you know, turning in early on Saturday so you can get up, you know, early on Sunday to do a long run. And, I've been able to hang out or whatnot. Some of that stuff. Some of these runs are not fun. I'm not even gonna lie. Like some days it's not, it's not fun. I try to just uh, be appreciative of it anyway. But yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie and tell everybody all my runs I'm out here skipping and whistling. It's a really interesting sort of talking about the idea of sport because I don't know if it's happened in your household, but for me growing up, like sport wasn't like, really a thing. It was like. For fourth or fifth down the list, it wasn't even on the list. Yeah. Everything else was like education yeah. and status. And That's, so, yeah, similar to my upbringing as well. And how do you kind of change that mindset now from what you had to, to now? Um, there's a lot of difference, differences, like how I parent to my to how my parents parented me. My parents are obviously African, and then everything's about uh, school, the books, put your head in the books, and everything. Sport was good, but fundamentally. Fundamentally, you have to um, get your your work done. But at the same time, you have to enjoy yourself, have the sport, because because they work side by side. I think. I think for me, the way I, the way I keep going when I really, really want to give up, um, and there's plenty of times, you know, there's been plenty of times in long runs where I where my head will just say to me, "Forget it. You don't have to do this. You know, you don't have to do this." But there's a part of me that says, I do have to do this. I'm doing it for a reason. I'm doing it for a charity. I'm an ambassador for Alzheimer's Research UK. And I have said I will raise awareness through my late wife's name. And that's what I will do. And I do it for all the people that support me. Um, I do it for the people who, you know, as well as support, have sponsored me and, and made incredible donations. And we've raised a lot of money. So when I want to stop, I have to think of those people. But I think importantly, you, you get to a stage with running where you don't want to let yourself down either. And you, that's where the challenge comes in. And for someone who's thinking about applying for the 2022 London Marathon or a future London Marathon, what would you tell them? If you're thinking about doing the London Marathon, don't think about it. Just sign up and do it. Because I can't, explain to you the amazing event that you will be a part of and you know there's only about two percent of the people in this country in the UK that have run a marathon and that's a pretty small group of people and to have been part of that nobody can ever take that away from you just do it.